always. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of Keeping Up with Ambassadors. We have a new guest today, Maria. Hello. 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 So it's great to have you here on the Charney Center platform. And just for the new viewers, would like to remind you of what this format is. Basically, me, I'm Jaime. I'm an intern at the Charney Resolution Center, and I've been conducting interviews with some of our ambassadors and kind of catching up with the stage of life thread and talking about some issues of their interest and that we believe are of global relevance and linked to our mission. And um, for those of you that don't know, the ambassador program is a network of alumni from the Eastern Mediterranean International School that after graduation with the Charney Center, they, they build a partnership and collaborate on several projects that are linked to, to a, achieving, um, trying to achieve the mission of, of diplomacy and dialogue and, uh, and peace somehow related to the Middle East. So today I have the honor to introduce a new ambassador, Maria from Lithuania, from the class of MS of 2021, a dear friend of mine. It's great to see you here. If you wanna just introduce yourself and yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'm Maria, as Jaime introduced me, and I was born and raised in Lithuania. I graduated MS last year. So I'm a very fresh graduate, and I currently study business in Barcelona, Spain. How's the weather? How's Barcelona? <laughs> Barcelona is lovely. Like, it's nothing like expect, uh, expected. A lot of people told me, like, wow, you're going to Barcelona to live there. And I never actually understood that I'm actually mm. going to Barcelona to live there. <laughs> so it's uh, above and beyond all, all my expectations. And the weather is beautiful. I would not want to be in Lithuania with negative five <laughs> degrees right now. <laughs> I very much relate to that. And I'm happy yeah. <laughs> to hear that. Um, OK, so when, when we, me and Maria were talking, we kind of um, agreed on the importance and relevance of of this topic of let's let's call it juggling amongst identities and trying to find ourselves in this very quickly developing and complex world. And especially for us, like both me and Maria, we left home pretty early at sixteen, went to the boarding school MS, and so I feel like we have a very different perception of more specifically our national identity than many other people. And so we just thought it'd be interesting today to kind of talk about these issues and how it personally affected us and how to give some real life examples. And so just to start it off, I'd like to ask you how your relationship with your Lithuanian identity was while you were still living there. So before starting your experience at MS. Um. So the first thing, like when I was in Lithuania before even thinking of applying to MS and leaving home, I never really thought how I see it or how it actually affects me on a, like a daily life or anything, what being Lithuanian is really like. Like, of course, you follow the traditions, you go to basketball games, you cheer for the national team in the Olympics, and you feel very nationalist inside during those events, but you don't really think about it in the international perspective. And I would never really talk with my friends about it because it was just more of just common sense. We celebrate the national events, we have fun, and then we just move on with our lives. And how did this change once you were thrown in this melting pot of cultures and identities at MS? Um, the first months when I came to MS, I was in quite a, cultural shock because whenever I would introduce myself I would always be like hi I'm Maria I'm from Lithuania and everyone would be like where from where <laughs> yeah. what is that where where is that what is that what language do you speak like they would have like minimum to none knowledge about it um, so for me it was actually really really hard personally to be, like come into the position of having to explain people where I come from and in a way to prove the national identity that it is a country and we have our culture and I'm really proud of it. And um, it also, I became the Lithuanian girl, which was also like, it was 
in a way the national identity came into my title and people would like talk and they would be like, oh, the Lithuanian girl, you know? So it really, like I understood the strength of the identity when I came to MS and throughout those few years, I've kind of found a way to not need to prove people about it, but also inform them so they're aware of it. And I also felt some kind of pressure on my shoulders because they would also be like, you're the first person I ever meet from there. I'm like, okay, so now I will introduce you my whole country and you will think of Lithuania as I represent. So it's quite a pressure. And if you're put next to like a German girl or, or American guy, they will be like, ah, I've been there. I know that you're, you celebrate this and stuff like that. And you're like, Lithuania? Yeah, Come no on. background. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's very interesting because it's a pattern I've also noticed a lot how in the first, especially first months, but also first years, when when these young new students are thrown into this messy life at MS, um, it really does strengthen at first their like their feeling of national identity because a bit because maybe they're feeling homesick and it's the first time they're actually not in a context where all they know is their local national identity um and they also feel like they have to like they want to share this and they're happy to share some of their culture and so they really identify themselves stronger in it and then there's a shift happening and the best example is just how in the first year all the rooms are covered with national flags yeah. <laughs> which i never liked but i still did it and then yeah. the second year you really see the shift and then people don't have to prove it anymore and it's just more accepted that that national identity is just a tiny part of what made you you and a tiny part of the things you believe in. And for some people, it's stronger. For some people, it's weaker. But there's really the shift and like people realizing how we're much more whole rounded and complex humans. And we need less, again, as you said, like the, yeah. the necessity to prove, oh my God, like I have this identity. And I think we can like we can also make a connection without diving too much into the complexity of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But there as well, like especially for them having both Israelis and Palestinians a particularly strong and also vulnerable and sensitive feeling of nationalism and national ethnic identity. They especially at the beginning they feel like they have to they have to prove it so much and that yeah. really changes um and so maybe making this connection i'd like to ask you without diving into the israeli palestinian conflict in itself we'll have a lot of other formats to do that i don't think this is the, for, sure. the for sure but i think it'd be interesting to analyze how like there's a there's a few students every year at ms that are call them Palestinian Israeli, call them Arab Israeli, call them Arab Jews, whatever. Um, labels at the end are just inventions we stick on people. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on how, how you think or how you saw the experience was for them with having these two identities that both live in them but are also very contrasting. Um, I think it all comes down to belonging. And we all have to belong to one category. And for like, for for example, Italians, it was so easy to just belong for that one group or Germans. And for them, they were always a bit divided. And when they had to introduce, like I remember, it was one of the most like interesting observations, like throughout those two years of seeing the Arab Israelis, Palestinian Israelis, like. like in a way restructure their identity they came in and find it like newly and freshly. And I just remember how much pressure they went through when, for example, celebrating the national days or singing songs, or when it came to like active conflict. And it was complicated for even from an outside perspective to watch it of just like the pressure they get to choose one side over the other and they get criticized for being both. And I think it's really interesting and it's so complicated from its nature and seeing some people actually give up half of their identity because of the pressure of other people was actually hurtful because you know 
like they could find a way to be like within both they don't have to like completely give up one to belong to one group so i think it also becomes to like comes together to the belonging part of just like we have to belong to some group and in ms i feel like they weren't really allowed to belong to both i think yeah you bring up a good point and that's sort of some of the negative consequences or some of the limitations of having such a like strong and present of having the, these national identities be it internationals or be it locals so like heavily present and significant is that you really feel like you have to embrace it all the way and like pick a side and really like know your position and then a lot of people just have these internal conflicts with like like yes like people are pushing me towards the side and then also you maybe as an arab israeli you make new palestinian friends and then you you're also just going through the process of rediscovering a part of your identity that you weren't able to explore because maybe back at home in whatever haifa or i don't know you you didn't experience that so it's really like this constant contrast and yeah. since it's so out there it's really hard to to like take a step back and let them let them embrace just the even the contradictions that there are and and the complexity of it and i think this happens a bit more again in, in the second year when people try to like somehow find find their space again um mm. and so yeah i think we can link it again to to the thought that we just have to start like just accepting without being fully able to understand that it's much more complex than i am a or i am b or i am a because i'm not b and that it's much more often overlapping um yeah it's very different proportions as well i think like it's not like um a bit of this a bit of that it's about such a spectrum and it comes to different aspects and maybe one day i'll wake up and i'll be closer to that side or closer to another and i think it's beautiful but it's so complicated and it's so hard to accept and find like personally find your place in it and i think like especially from my side like looking at it with such a strong and set identity it's even like i always question it like how can it be so hard for someone to like come like come like at the end of the day and be like who am i and which identity am i going to choose yeah good point and now um like you mentioned that you live in barcelona and so my <laughs> my politics interested nerd and me uh just made the connection and i think it's it's very interesting how now like moving away from our beloved middle east and applying it to to the new place you're living in like that is also an extremely like historically socially culturally dense and complex place in terms of identity just because Extremely, there's this very yeah. very significant independence movement so they feel catalan but at the same time they're spanish some people want independence other don't and so without again having to dive too much into the political complexity just if you want to share some of your first impression with living with catalans and studying with them and sort of observing how they yeah. navigate and juggle between identities Yeah, I'm very fresh in this context, but I also noticed that the first months that I shifted from one identity crisis to another, mm. um, and I think it's a very different one because there is no active conflict here, but they are striving for their independence. Um, it's interesting because you don't feel you feel in Catalonia, but you also feel in Spain. and they speak catalan and they also speak spanish but when you will ask them where you're from they'll say spain first and then catalonia or they'll just say from barcelona so they it's very like they come from the side the dorm goes straight to directly like i'm catalan and this 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 i speak catalan at home they come from the side they come from around and it's not very loud but you feel the catalan identity strongly and it's a very different one than the spanish one and i think they don't get that much publicity in today's world 
and I like speak with with quite a few friends about it, and they they come from international backgrounds and they identify themselves as Catalan, and it's also a sense of belonging of what is being Catalan when you don't really even have a country. Um, if you go outside of Catalonia and you speak Catalan, you will get commented on it. But if you speak Spanish with your Catalan friends, you will get commented on it. So it's it's just like, again, like choosing and feeling. I think here it's more of the idea of feeling Catalan or feeling Spanish is more stronger. Um, so it's also a very interesting case. Yeah, for sure. I'd love to, you know, dive deeper into it and try to explore it more. Maybe we'll have other occasions for that. But again, I think this is yeah. just another very straightforward example of how at the end identities that are contrasting can coexist. And again, we have to accept that it's just like, it's not as straightforward and as structured and simplified. And as you said, it's a spectrum. Um, so I think now we can, like having, after having talked about a bit of your experience and the examples of both Arab Israelis and Catalans struggling with, with this double identity, I like to try to broaden it up a bit and, and think more in general about um, how I ident like national identities especially play a role in, in this modern era in the 21st century because we've all been seeing in Europe, but Northern America as well, all around the world, these big movements of strengthening national identity and right-wing propaganda and like appealing back to these traditional values, et cetera. And <laughs> We will not go into the like <laughs> political yeah. critique of all of that, but I think we know our positions. But there's I still think, lot. yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> um, I still <laughs> think it's interesting to like to just acknowledge how more and more, like we we're all more connected. We're all more, and again, we're speaking from our like traveling. Cool international, international <laughs> privilege on our on our visas whatever and and we'll keep it at the scope of this in terms of identities but we are just exposed to so many like so many new cultures and so many new things um but also different types of identities are able to rise so in terms of um in terms of even like gender etc and um and I think it's interesting, like I'd like to hear your opinions on like where you draw the line between like all the all the labels that people put you in and all the like boxes that they try to put you in, but at the end you're just trying to like understand the the, the values you thrive for, and those are often like cross identity and cross cultural. So just yeah. if, if you want to share some thoughts on like trying to find this um, balance and border. I think sometimes it's very hard to like it's very easy to be restricted with between within those titles and in a few cases it's not about like the person doesn't really care what you believe in rather than what you like see yourself as so you will introduce yourself and the first question so we'd be like okay name age country maybe some hobbies what do you do um maybe what do you like religiously believe in or something like yeah. closer to the, like spirituality but it's never really like what do you value the most yeah. like it's not going to be it's always the small the, talk you, you the question is always what are you and not who are you and that's what <laughs> exactly, i don't like it's exactly like, okay tell me like the boxes all the labels just so i like yes. in my head i can feel like reassured and know where to like like put you create these people's the profiles with yeah. the same thing you can find them on Facebook or something or just any social media but we really forget to go deeper into it and I think it's like because of social media now these days it's so hard to like get to know the person from their the, 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 the bottom line you know mm -hmm. like understand what matters to them 
who they are. Yeah. Yeah, I think I I always and we've talked a bit about this, but I always like to yeah, like go back to to values and I think or at least in my experience and how like I never had a, a particularly strong national identity both because I'm Italian and German so in Italian I was the German dude in Germany I was the Italian <laughs> like I was yeah. always the also other complicated one. exactly also complicated we won't dive into that but still even like now like I'm living in San Francisco I'm going to move six different cities like it's always that you 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 grow like you detach yourself a bit from these these boxes that you were put into but then still like still maintaining and still recognizing those things that that do matter and for example like i'll give just a quick very easy example like italian identity blah 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 don't like all the pride nationalism but then if you mention like family which is certainly like a big part of italian tradition and identity that is something that matters to me and like whether it is mm-hmm. because i'm italian or whether it is just cuz it's 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 a value i i grown to love and to to appreciate but at the end it, it like it doesn't even matter anymore where the line is but i think it's it's good to remember to like fall back to our our core values and the the things that truly guide us and try to like like get less stuck yeah. on these on these categories and boxes for sure it's still like the core values do come from the like the initial steps of socialization and the socialization happens where you grow your identity of like the country where you grow up in so it must be to some extent interconnected for sure it is for sure okay wow very fascinating i think yeah could, <laughs> there's so much to it. talk about it we could talk yeah. about it for hours but for the um, for the scope of this short introduction interviews i'd like to to move closer to our ending and maybe now that we've discussed this interesting topic i'd like to give you a little bit space to to mention to our audience what how do you feel about you know being part of this new you know ambassador network group and how do you see yourself being involved in the future in the next few months yeah just share some thoughts um i think it's quite a a new opportunity for me to look at things differently and i already like brainstormed a bit of just like what articles i would think like I think like throughout the day, I just sit up and I'm like, I would like to talk with this person about this, which would also relate to the journey and everything and a podcast. And you, you come back to MS and you think of the things you want to reflect on and what influenced you. And I think it's just a beautiful opportunity to put it all together and to like initiate those new, new ideas. Um, so I'm excited to use this platform and to work on those new projects, for example, a podcast for international students. So we'll see where it goes, but I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I love that. I, I know we've talked a little about the podcast and we don't want to spoil too many details. Stay tuned for yeah. that. But <laughs> yeah, as I, as I said in the last episode, now we have Xenia who joined you and we have a couple of new ambassadors from from your class that are starting to to collaborate with us so I, i'm also really excited to just keep this tight tight network and try to work on yeah on some new projects and initiatives so i'm excited for it's what's beautiful. coming yeah and thank you for tuning in thank you for sharing your thoughts and yes thank you thank you so much for having me and it was really nice to talk about it thank you all for listening and We'll hear back from you in the next episode of Keeping Up from the Ambassador. Bye. Thank you. Bye.